Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. You can send us a tweet at the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed. That is at Bomani underscore Jones. Oh, yeah. Cavs lost last night. LeBron came up short. Let's hit the falls and talk to Rick in Las Vegas. Rick, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, Bomani, how you doing today, man? Doing all right, man. All right, now check this out. The reason why the Cavs lost LeBron is a straight bump. Everybody told me he's great. He's the greatest of all time, greatest player. Michael Jordan never, you know what I'm saying, had zero points in the fourth quarter of a playoff series game. So now I'm not understanding how everybody feel that, oh, some LeBron fans are going to say, oh, he, he took the night off and did all of that. He's a bump. Okay, point blank, period. Are you a Kobe fan, too? I'm not a Kobe fan. I'm a Melo fan. Wait a minute. You're, out here, you're on the Melo fan wagon, and you call LeBron above? Yes, I am. You're Warriors for the and four. You heard it from Rick. Okay, you, hold, hold, okay hold on, Rick. You root for the Knicks, don't you? Of course. I'm a New Yorker. Why not? I mean, I see why you so bad. She had to hit the button. Oh, man. Hey, 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 hey. Thanks for calling Rick. He Rick from Las Vegas talking about, of course, I'm a New Yorker. But I ain't got a chance. I, I can't trace y'all, trace your steps. Really easy. It's like the Thundercat signal. All you got to do is say, we're Brooklyn at. You come from everywhere. <laughs> Repelling from the ceiling. Coming down from the rafters. 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number here on the right time. So, yes, the Celtics got that win without their best player, Isaiah Thomas. Now, Isaiah Thomas is a bit of a complex one, and part of why Isaiah Thomas is a bit of a complex one is that he is such a great one-on-one individual basketball player. But when you get to the advanced numbers on Isaiah Thomas – and the defense, it gets to be a little bit tricky, right? They are going to have a difficult decision to make with Isaiah Thomas because you got to decide whether or not that's a cat you want to pay $40 million to. Like, all those things are there at play, and it does not help that he does not play, and then all of a sudden, the Celtics get down in a way that we had not seen the Celtics get down before. Also, it should be noted, the Celtics played a strong defensive second half. Like, not all of that was just simply the Cavs missing shots. Not all of it was just simply LeBron not showing up. In the second half, they held the Cavs to 42 points. Now, what's the thing they struggle with doing when Isaiah's on the floor? Playing defense, because you always got to find some place to hide Isaiah Thomas on defense. Isaiah Thomas is one of the worst defensive players in the NBA, according to the advanced metrics. One of the worst defensive players in the NBA. And then they go out here and they win this game that they're not supposed to win with Isaiah Thomas off the floor. By the way, Shannon, do you know what Isaiah Thomas is shooting for three-point range in the playoffs by percentage this year? What's up? 33%. He's only making one out of every three. I say, well, I raised the question. I don't feel comfortable saying I said this, but I raised the question for the playoffs. Was Isaiah Thomas playing for his job? How crazy is it that right now Isaiah Thomas is, like, not playing for his job? Like, what happened? Say, I, mean, I don't think this is going to happen. Let's say the Celtics rattle off three wins and they force a game seven without Isaiah Thomas. Or what are they, even two? What if they win two games without Isaiah Thomas? They come back home and win a game five. What if they win two games without Isaiah Thomas when they were hurtling toward a sweep with him on the floor? How does it go? What's the discussion? How people play it? What do you think? It's funny how this works as well, because once Isaiah went out, people were like, well, see, that's why that's why the Celtics should have made a trade to get a second star, because at least they would have had somebody. How well is that working out now for San Antonio, by the way? Right. But also with Isaiah now, uh, they, they, get, they have serious questions to ask, because the big one, like you said, after next season, he's going to want a lot of money. And as you can see, if the team is good enough to win without him – and he wants a lot of money. doesn't bode well for Isaiah. But here's the thing. They won this game in large part because Marcus Smart hit seven three-pointers in the game, which none of us believes will ever happen again. He shot under 30% at the college three-point line. I honestly don't know why he got the audacity to keep trying to shoot these threes in the NBA. I guess because he's like, one day I'm going to get in the playoffs and they're going to need me to hit seven of them. And he hit seven of them. All right, more improbable. What uh, what the Celtics did last night or the Celtics winning again in Cleveland? 
tying the series up 2-2. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, they, look, they're not winning game four. You say that. I, no, I confidently say that. They're not winning game four. What were we saying after that's, the— I, That's fine. That's fine. But they're not winning game four. I will say this right now. Definitively, the Celtics will not win game four. Look, I know we were saying that after that the game two beat them down. Right, right, right. And the Celtics will not win game four. I, yes, what happened last night was more likely than it would be if they won game four. The Celtics are now, and I feel like the more I say this, the more I guarantee the Celtics will win game four. But if the Celtics win game four, good for business. Very, very good for business. Right? Like we plan to talk about this Isaiah Thomas thing. Already ran out of gas. That's how funny it works, especially with LeBron. Like, like, let's assume the Celtics go out and somehow win game four, but LeBron has an amazing game. But we'll still ask, is this one on LeBron? Right. What right. more should have LeBron right. have done? But let me ask this. What's it like being Isaiah Thomas watching these games? Like, watching that game, you see how well they play without you. On one hand, you happy for the squad, right? You got to be happy for the squad. On the other hand, come on, man, you got to know. What, I mean, I'm not saying that this means that you need to get rid of Isaiah Thomas because of what happened in one game. But if it happens in the second game, at some point you got to go look in the mirror, get a, you know, get a phone book, stand on it, get in front of the mirror, and be like, hey, man, I don't know. Like, is it me? Did, did I have something to do with this? Is this part of it? Because it's a great – what well, can you do with a 5 nine point guard? What can you do? And did they play better defense without him? But, again, Marcus Smart hit seven three-pointers, and LeBron James played in a way that we have not seen him play in years. And you know who I bet the first person to bring all those points up will be? Isaiah Thomas. You know, it's real big of Marcus stepping up in that way when they needed it because y'all know he can't shoot. 888-729-3776. Zip the phone. Talk to Chip in Illinois. Chip, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I just wanted to say that considering that the Celtics do have the number one pick and they can get Markel Fultz, and like you said, Isaiah Thomas is so short and he's a defensive liability, I think it would be smart of the Celtics to at least trade. I mean, figure out what you can get for him Maybe not trade him for less value than what you think he's worth, but see what's out there. Well, I tell you this, and I appreciate the call. Here's the problem. You can't get anything for him. And part of why you can't get anything for him is because he only makes $6 million a year, right? So how do you make the salaries match on a trade that's worth it for you for Boston to get Isaiah Thomas? The other part is how do you trade for Isaiah Thomas when it's entirely possible he's going to check you to deuce at the end of the season? Like, all of this is totally fascinating. Like, we're getting way ahead being like, oh, man, the Celtics are going to get rid of Isaiah Thomas. Totally getting ahead of ourselves with it. But it's realistic to say that no one really thought that Isaiah Thomas would be able to put together a season like he did this year, right? So much so that Jackie McMullen said on the Bob Ryan uh, Boston podcast that Danny Ainge was unsuccessful during last offseason to trade Thomas. He was looking for a lottery pick and had no takers. So he was trying to get rid of him last year. Yeah, and then all of a sudden this happened. And that's got to be like, man, you got to be shitting me. Are you serious? Are you serious? I'm sure he didn't mind getting the W's, but Ixnay on the individual performances. Hey. By the way, this is a guy that's, had, that's made the All-Star game twice, right? Like he's a little better than people give him credit for. Like I mean, he is a good player. I just don't know what you do with him. And apparently the Celtics figured out what to do without him. Hey, the right time is brought to you by Upside. Now say big on traveling. Get a big gift card every trip you buy. You'll love Upside.com. Upside.com. 888-729-3776. That's the telephone number here on the right time. Give us a call. Coming up next, we got your phone calls. And also, Jonas Jerebko, the villain that this series needed. Find out why we say that on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. Tim Legler of ESPN will join us next segment. Tim Legler is talking about what went wrong for the Cavs in Game 3. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Let's get on the phone and talk to DJ Mike Hitman. Mike, what's going on? Hey, Bo. What a win. Why is everybody from Cleveland calling me? And telling me, yourself is going down. 
I don't hear y'all calling me now. I have to remind y'all, Cleveland. Y'all lost the World Series against Chicago. I have to remind Cleveland. Y'all lost the real Cleveland Brown dog pound. And I'm going to remind you, Cleveland, Brown is still forming that ball at the one y'all had. You got to go. Why you got to break up all the all that stuff, Mike? Paul, Cleveland on me. And hey, Cleveland, yesterday, how you feel now? Boston won yesterday. What's smart? He's not a shooter. But he does a defensive play. They lost a basketball game with smart. And, Paul, they took their hand away from them boys. Cleveland, Boston figured out something. They didn't need it. They don't need to be a star player. They beat you out, they star player. Now the game. It's a rumble and jungle now. And the big chicken going to be good tomorrow, Cleveland, because let me tell you something. Y'all lose tomorrow, which I think y'all going to lose tomorrow. Y'all coming back to Town. It ain't going to be nice. And the rest of I don't know what you put in your hair. Keep that jail in your hair because you look the good shooting that ball. You didn't miss nothing yesterday. Have a good one, Bo. <laughs> All right, Mike. 888-729-3776. Mike is big on people having jail in their hair, Shannon. Have you noticed that? Yeah, what's up with that? He's bigger than what is the grill is not. That's what the kids are using now. I don't know about the, I don't the know. Joe. Yeah, Mike. Mike is up on uh, white folks' hair care in a way that I simply am not. I really can't like comment on the the products that anybody uses. Really, I don't know what anybody uses on their hair anymore because what do I need to know those things for? Damn it. Eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. That is our telephone number. My man talked about Jonas Jerebko. Uh Jerebko did hit all of his shots. In the game, and Jarevko seemed to, I don't know if gooning it up a little is the way to put it, but you saw that where he knocked Kevin Love to the ground, and then he stood over him, right? Well, here's Jarevko's explanation for what went down in that circumstance. I just thought he flopped. I, I don't like people flopping. I don't flop, so, you know, I just had to tell him. What did he say? Uh, he kind of laughed. He knew he flopped. He knew he did. So, I mean, he's a great player, uh, you know, but stand up. Don't flop. It's my, my motto, at least. <laughs> Hey, hold on, hold on. I need you to play that sound again, Steve. Play that one more time. I just thought he flopped. I, I don't like people flopping. I don't flop. So, you know, I just had to tell him. What did he say? Uh, he kind of laughed. He knew he flopped. He knew he did. So, I mean, he's a great player, uh, you know, but stand up. Don't flop. It's my, my motto, at least. Shannon, help me out. I'm a little confused. I thought y'all said that was Jonas Jurepko. Yeah, I looked at the sound sheet, and it said uh, Jonas Jurepko. Yes. Uh, all I'm saying is that don't sound like no Jonas Jurepko to me. Right, that may sound like that Jonas Jurevko, but that is not how I thought Jonas Jurevko sounded. Your friendly reminder that one of my favorite things in sports is guys who learn to speak English in the NBA. Like, if I were to give you that voice and hand you a Celtics roster and say, who is that? How many people you think would have come back with Jonas Jurevko? Jonas Jurevko been in the NBA for eight years, though. Like, all it was missing, Shannon, was a you-know-what-I'm-saying. Or perhaps a Yamin. I'm sure he was going to drop a B. It yes. was coming. It was, yes. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't like flopping B. Well, you know, I don't, you know, this is what it is. Like, I, God, I love that. Anytime I hear that, because I watched that interview as it happened. And I was like, wait a minute, that's what Drevko sounds like? And see, part of what I thought was interesting, though, about this game is, I mean, they didn't go goon, but you saw that Avery Bradley had the thing with Kyrie Irving where they got a little tangled up and they had to do a little something about it. Hey, man, I think the Celtics went to that Butler playbook after a while and just be like, hey, man, we have to be as annoying as possible. We're not that good, but we have the, the ability to be really, really annoying. And so go do the really, really annoying things. And they got it done. Also, Marcus Smart hit seven three-pointers. Keep going back to that, huh? Just can't go back. But, oh, check this though. Here's Jarecko talking about that screen he put down on Darren Williams. Oh, it was nothing. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to be out there playing tough and sending tough screens, uh, trying to get my teammates open. And, uh, you know, he wanted to stand in the middle of the court while I was running. And the referee said I had to run run around him. I try to run through him and stuff stuff like that happens. Hey, man, we got to get we, – we need to take Jarecko to some playground so I can listen to him toss smack amongst the, 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 the natives. Like, I want to hear this. I need this in my life. But, hey, man, I mean, that's what the – one thing the Celtics do have is they got cats that are going out there to play hard. Like, okay, if I can't if I can't be better than you, then I can be a little grimier than you. And they got a bunch of dudes like that. And, and those dudes came to ball, by the way. Jay Crowder had the best game I think I've seen him have in the postseason. And the only reason he's out there is to be – is to play hard. Like, that, that's all he's got. Like, what you got, six hard ones and a lot of energy. Like, that's what Jay Crowder has to offer. And all those dudes – 
came to play. And I have to say, that makes this a little bit more entertaining because they have, in fact, legislated the goon out of the NBA. It's one of the worst things they could have done, but they've largely legislated the goon out of the NBA. But there will always be a role for a goon. There will always be a place for a goon, even if the goon isn't the way that we remember the goon being back in the day. And I guess Jarepko is like the modern version of what passes for a goon these days, right? But, hey, man, he was out there. He's like, all, I got, all I'm here to do is set screens and, like, guard people in places they don't want to be guarded. That's it. 888-729-3776. Let's talk to Carter in South Florida. Carter, thanks for calling the right time. All right, Bo. Big fan, first of all. It's common, kind of a combination of a statement but more of a question at the same time. Uh, being a South Florida, you know, South Florida kid, born and raised Heat fan, big Heat fan, and I remember LeBron disappearing in that Dallas series. And it seems like, in my personal opinion, what happened to Jordan when uh, Sports Illustrated put him on the cover and said, bag it, and how he never dealt with Sports Illustrated again, I think, like, and I don't want you to take shots at your own employer, but it seems like ESPN, anytime LeBron has a horrible game, it's like a slight verb or 11 points. But there's no real dogging him out because he's supposed to be the greatest player of all time. Or, you know, that's the market around him. And he constantly is disappearing in huge games. So I kind of wanted to get your take on that. And maybe how your network hold, kind of hold, hold, hold on, just a second before I let you go here. You think that nobody let Le, you think that people let LeBron slide in the Dallas series? I think they definitely got on him, but I think it's just so repetitive with him. I think it happens way too consistently. He disappears. Hold, hold on, hold on. When's, I, when's when's the last time he had a game where you would say that he disappeared in the playoffs? Before um, this, I not to specifically reference it, but definitely. Hold on, no, hold on, no. If it happens all the time, you should be able to remember one fairly recently, right? Well, when he's disappearing against San Antonio in the last series in Miami, I mean, it's great. You talking about, like you you about, about the series where he shot fifty-eight percent from the field? Like Dwayne Wade vanished in that one. You think LeBron disappeared? And he definitely disappeared in terms of mentality, in terms of standpoint. Yeah, he, he doesn't have that dog in him. That's my point. It's when it comes time to get that dog, it's like sometimes he shies away, sometimes you get it from him. In that series against Boston, in the first year in Miami, he oh, gave you that Oh, man, point. hey, 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 hey. Yeah, appreciate that call, Carter. I got a sneaky suspicion he wasn't saying that when LeBron played for the Heat. Because they all had the capes on LeBron when he played for the Heat. He left, and all of a sudden they're like, that's why you let J.J. Barea shut you down in the post. 888-729-3776, hour from Dallas. Thanks for calling the right time. Hey, Bomani, listen, everybody need to relax, man. Take a pill, chill out for a minute. I think LeBron is Mr. Petty James. I'm calling him Petty because the simple fact he didn't get the MVP award, he took the night off. Now, I may come back to bite them, maybe not. But if you're the greatest player, your team is in the bonus, you don't drive to the hole at all, and you only lost by three, come on, man. Let's relax. That Cleveland's going to win. But the downside is Golden State is going to give them that business in the finals. How about? Hold on, Ira. But they announced the MVP finalists on Friday, and LeBron went out there and killed them boys on Friday. What are you talking about? Sometimes when people get to talking, Bomadi, you getting your feelings. I think he got in his feelings, man. But 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 on, but, but on Friday is when he found out and he went out there and killed them. What, you think he didn't get sad about it till Sunday? But, Bomadi, listen, if you find out, and not you personally, but you find out, your girl was cheating. You take that on the chin. You're okay. But then your boys find out, man, I can't believe your girl did that. I can't believe she did that. You going to take that? Man, you ought to show them something. You know you're the best in the league. You know what? I am the best in the league. I'm going to sit this game out. That's just my thought. Oh, man. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, and that's what fascinates me. Brought to you by Firestone Complete Auto Care. Keeping cars running newer longer. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. All right, coming up next, what went wrong for the Cavs down the stretch? We'll talk to Tim Legler on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. We've been talking a lot about Upside.com, telling you it will save you or your company big on business travel and that you'll get a big gift card every trip you buy. Sounds too good to be true, right? Go to Upside.com and check it out. Super fast searches, by the way. For instance, in less than two minutes, you can have a few awesome choices on American Airlines flights to Chicago at the end of next month that work for you and a bunch of big-name hotels. Your options could get you a $268 gift card and save your company $268. 
taking a business trip, you'd be crazy not to use Upside. Spend less of your company's money and get more rewards for yourself. Upside is the real deal. You may wind up with a $268 gift card. Trust me, go to Upside.com today. Plus, when you use promo code BOMANI, you're guaranteed to get at least a $100 Amazon gift card your first trip. That's code BOMANI to get a $100 gift card free. Say big on traveling, get a big gift card every trip. See what your next trip's worth today. Upside.com, that's Upside.com. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line, just like our next guest covers the NBA for us here at ESPN. His name is Tim Legler. Uh, Tim, second half with the Cavs, the buckets stopped falling. Was that strategic or just a matter of the shots just stopped falling? Well, I think it was a matter of percentages finally coming back around to earth, really. I mean, the way they shot the ball in the first half, Bomani, that, that's not sustainable. They're not going to keep shooting that way. The difference, though, is that normally um, when that's not happening, you have this freight train of a player that is just winning his individual matchup whenever he wants to, and you're still getting layups and dunks and three-point plays and free throws mixed in with all those threes. Uh, it was an incredible number. 29 of the 38 shots that were taken in the game that were not taken by LeBron and Kyrie were three-point shots. So this shows you how limited a lot of these guys are offensively in terms of the, you know, their confines of this offense. But normally they're getting the supplemental inside stuff out of LeBron, but he didn't seem like he came out in that mindset whatsoever. And when they dried up from the three-point line, it was a little bit too late for him to try to turn it on because he really wasn't aggressive as a scorer the entire game right from the outset. What was your first thought when you saw he had that lack of aggression? I was very surprised, and I actually made a mental note of it, you know, knowing I was going to be doing coverage after the game. Regardless of how it turned out, I just thought it was strange to watch him come out after watching him for 10 games come out with that mindset in the first quarter that he was going to just set the tone get switches, you know, win his matchup in isolation, uh, get to the rim, break defenses down, and then react out of that on the kickouts to the role players. That's the way they were operating their offense for the entire playoff. So to see him come out, and it was clear to me in the first six, seven minutes of the game that he wasn't in the right place uh, mentally that he had been, uh, I was curious to see how this was going to turn out. Now, Kevin Love masked a lot of that by making seven threes in the first half. Kyrie made four threes in the first half, and you're still up 16. And I really believe at halftime, LeBron sort of checked out of the game as a scorer, thinking that, well, we, we have enough tonight with these other guys to win it. Maybe he just mentally hit some kind of wall. He's just a little bit fried from carrying that every night, not really feeling a threat from the Celtics. Isaiah Thomas not playing, all of those things. And he just decided to let other guys do it. The problem was when they started missing, they turned to him to try to bail them out and not force them into this situation where they're going to have to go back to Boston now. And he just couldn't respond because he spent most of the night passive. And it's very difficult. I don't care who you are. If you're Kevin Durant, Carmelo, James Harden, you name the top scorer that you want to. If you spend two and a half, three quarters in a passive mindset, it's very difficult to then go get buckets when you need to just because you want to. Um, and that's where they found themselves last night. And now they've created a lot more work for themselves than it needed to be. They did not need to be getting on a plane anymore, Bamani, unless it was headed west. All right, we're talking to Tim Legler of ESPN on the right time. And no excuses for LeBron. 11 points and six turnovers isn't going to get it done. But do we as fans have a tendency to underestimate what it takes to dial it up mentally game after game? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think so. There is some truth in that. I mean, you know, but then, you know, you watch a guy like Russell Westbrook, though, and you, you go, you know, the guy never turns it off. I don't. I think the guy's running around his kitchen when he's making breakfast. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are some players that – they do it every night. And LeBron, you know, typically does do it. It's just that, you know, all of the the uh, praise that he had been getting, Bamani, saying, oh, he's the best he's ever looked and never seen a more dominant. The game has never looked easier. Uh, one of the greatest playoff stretches in the history of the league. And then you come out and you just don't really feel like engaging offensively. It's just a really bizarre – to me, that kind of thing is premeditated or – where, you know, he just didn't get himself there or he in the warm-ups before the game, he's warming up and he just said, man, I just don't have it tonight, whatever it may be. It was just very strange with the run that he's had to be that uninvolved with that, what they were doing offensively. Uh, and, and, it's, and, and especially strange, Bobani, when you look at what they were trying to accomplish and the fact that, you know, the last thing you want to have to do right now, if you're them, is go back to Boston. Like, that's the one thing. You didn't want to have to prolong this thing take another trip east, all of that stuff that comes with it. 
if you didn't have to. And I think if he showed up last night in the same mindset he had shown for the previous 10 games, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. All right, we're talking to Tim Legler on the right time. Now, for the Celtics, how much were they helped defensively by not having to try to hide Isaiah Thomas? Well, I think they were helped on both ends. And I, and I caught a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of noise from Celtic Nation because I said yesterday leading up to the game, they were going to be better offensively and more competitive overall without him on the court. That's not a knock against him as a player. That is saying this. When you have a star player, which your offense is built around, which it has been all year, and that player is five foot nine, and he's limited physically to where he can't get away from anybody, can't get open, can't get loose. His quickness isn't there, but the ball still keeps coming back to him because that's the way that you guys were trained to play this year. Well, then you have an ineffective offense. It, it cannot operate in, in those conditions. So when you take him off the floor, you're improving offensively because you're adding a healthy player to the floor. And the ball is going to move a little bit better, and you're going to get a bunch of guys that can go 100% moving the basketball well that happened last night they were better offensively and then certainly you're better defensively even if Isaiah Thomas is 100 percent healthy you're better defensively with someone else on the floor and that's proven out statistically one of the worst players in the league defensively per 100 possessions so they improved on both ends of the floor and it made it a much more competitive game now I didn't expect them to necessarily win the game but I did think they were going to operate at a much higher level without an injured Isaiah Thomas on the floor all right, before we let you go, we're talking to Tim Legler of ESPN. Any chance that the Spurs keep this series going out west? I can't see it. I actually would be infinitely more shocked if San Antonio wins tonight at home than Boston winning on the road last night. That's how big of a deal this would be if San Antonio wins this without Kawhi Leonard um, playing against that team because not only are you, are you taking out the guy that needs you offensively, he's the best defensive player in the league, and you have the team that you're facing with the most firepower in the league. So, you know, do the math on that. If you're looking at San Antonio, you're looking at a number probably 120. You know, can you get to 120? That's going to put you in the game with, you know, five minutes to go. If you can get to the 120, that's a big number without the only two guys on your team, really, that can create offense, and Tony Parker, Kawhi Leonard, sitting on the sideline. So I can't envision it, and I think Golden State watching that game last night, it prepared them more mentally to understand what can happen if you come out complacent or flat in this league particularly on the road, you're going to get it handed to you. So I think Golden State learned from last night, and now they want to be the one team that goes 12-0 and in their conference heading in uh, to the finals. All right, Tim Legler, check him out. Cover the NBA for us here on ESPN. By the way, Marcus Smart did a pretty good Tim Legler impression last night. You, did, you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't see that coming at all. He looked like Oklahoma State all over again, man. He looked like a cowboy out there. <laughs> here we go, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, Bavana, you got it. I all right, now, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Creators of the Name Your Price tool. Choose from a range of coverage options to pick the price that works for you. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line. Thanks to Tim Legler for joining us last segment. Sam A. Mick, USA Today, joins us in the 6 o'clock Eastern hour. There is no better way to brighten someone's special day than with 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen Gerbera daisies for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get a free vase. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. We were just talking about the Celtics without Isaiah Thomas. Let's hit the phone. Start the chip from Texas. Chip, thanks for calling the right time. Uh, Ch- <clears throat> Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, this is me, uh, Chet from Texas. Uh, why it seems like everybody is kind of, lack of a better word, they hating on <clears throat> little Isaiah Thomas, man. I mean, uh, today, right now, the right now, you can't tell me that the Boston Celtics will be a better team without him. I mean, I understand struggling with that argument, except for the fact that at least in this series, they sure looked a lot better without him last night than they had previously with him, you know? Yeah, well, I, I understand that, but I just, I mean, the guy can ball. You know, I don't know. Maybe he can be a six. I'm not a Celtic fan, don't get me uh But uh, I, I mean, it's like they kind of hating on him, like he don't belong in the league and he can score. You know what I'm saying? He can score. Well, here's he what can't I, do nothing else. Well, well, here's what I'd say. Chip, I appreciate the call. He can score if he can't do anything else. The problem is everybody can score on him. 
Like, I'm not at a point where I'm looking at that one game and necessarily being like, oh, see, they don't need Isaiah Thomas. But it is a question that they're going to have to answer on a number of levels. And Tim Legler was interesting talking about that. He said, look, I think they would be better on offense than on and on defense without Isaiah Thomas. And it's hard to say that wasn't the case, at least for one game. All right, 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. The Knicks fired an assistant coach that nobody had ever heard of, and that's a story because that assistant coach seems to get along pretty well with Christos Porzingis. Shannon, what y'all call him, the unicorn? Yes, he is still unicorn for right now. I have a unicorn horn for a – yeah, so they they have uh, Isaiah, they have him and now the assistant coach who had been the guy to go work out with Porzingis in Latvia during the offseason and everything else, and now they have let him go. Now, I'm not in a position to where I can say whether or not it was okay to let an assistant coach go. The reason I say that is I don't I mean – I don't know the staff. I don't know what their inner workings are. I don't know what made Phil Jackson – make that decision, and furthermore, I am uncomfortable with this idea that the Knicks need to be doing whatever they can to take care of Christos Porzingis, who hasn't really done anything. Like, for all the talk we have about how he's the future of the franchise, he's a really talented guy. I haven't seen anything yet to indicate to me that that's a dude you're going to give the ball to, and he's going to be one to carry you for a full season or carry you to a championship. I'm just not there yet. He has a freakish level of talent and a combination of size and skills that you don't see very often, but I'm not there yet on the we got to do do everything we can to keep Porzingis happy. If for no other reason than unless Porzingis really wants to buck a trend, there's only one player I can think of that's not signed his first contract extension with the team that drafted him. I do feel like they have a measure of leverage over him, and I do feel like if you're Phil Jackson, you got to do what you think is best for the team, no matter what, right? I don't know if Phil Jackson knows what he's doing, but he has the right to do it however it is that he sees so fit. And remember this, Phil Jackson won six rings with the Chicago Bulls, six rings with them. And the Bulls spent a lot of time making personnel moves that Michael Jordan hated. Hated. If they can make moves that Michael Jordan hated because they were what was best for the team, then I don't feel like you make moves around the whims of Kristaps Porzingis. I think you open the lines of communication and all of that stuff, and maybe he's not happy with some of the things you're doing, but I just don't feel like he's at the point in the league yet. Even in this player's league where the stars control things, I don't feel like he's at a point yet where I feel like you got to do whatever it is just to take care of Porzingis. That being said, Brian Winhurst was on Stephen A. Smith's show this afternoon, the radio show, and here's what he said to people in the NBA are whispering about Phil Jackson. There are people in the league who have said to me they think Phil Jackson is behaving in a way to try to get fired, that he wants to just get fired and take his money now that his option has been picked up. Now, that that. may not be true. I believe it is. These are people who know Phil and have worked with him, and whether it's true or not, it indicates his behavior is bewildering to people in the league. Even, you know, people, again, people who know him have said to me, I think he's trying to get fired. And um, that's not an endorsement. How far would you be willing to go, Shannon, to try to get fired under those circumstances? Like, I want to know how far Phil's willing to take this if he really is trying to get himself fired. He has to start showing up or actually not show up to work. But when he does, he got to come, like, in his PJs and his right. slippers. Smelling bad. <laughs> right. I mean, you got to start drinking at the desk, right? Like, you know how people keep that bottle of scotch in that drawer? You got to start doing that, but sipping at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He, right? has, he has to start responding to emails like reply all on every email yes. about anything. Yes. Reply all, but as though you don't realize you are press, pressing reply all. Like, can you say something crazy about Dolan in one of the emails, perhaps? Is that, is that the direction that you go in? Is that what it is? Because that would be interesting if he is trying to get himself fired. Because here's the thing. If he's trying to get himself fired, like if you ever get to the point that you feel like that, if you're the Knicks, then you have to fire him that day because otherwise he'll tear this whole thing down in the course of trying to get fired. Like if somebody is trying to get fired, they don't give up, right? Like they don't do it just a little bit and then just give up. No, 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 no. If he's trying to get fired, he's trying to get fired. You got to get him out of here before he burns the whole thing down with it. Except, Shannon, is there there a whole thing to burn down? That's my whole thing. Him trying to get fired is having the same level of success as he was when he was trying to put together a good team. I'd also note that him trying to be fired might be the best general managing that the Knicks have had in decades. Like, how crazy is that? Like, him trying to get fired might be better than people trying to make their mark on the whole city. It is entirely possible. I'm so glad I don't root for the Knicks, man. Can you imagine what it must be like to root for a team that doesn't ever do anything for you, but you keep giving them all your love and affection? Chad, can you imagine living that kind of life? I mean, I can't. Can you? That one chance, Bo. That one chance. That one chance, huh? You had your one chance. Game seven, the 1994 finals, and John Stark shot you out of the whole thing. It became a Houston legend. 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. Coming up next, are the Spurs playing this right with Kawhi? 
Thanks for listening to the Right Time Podcast. Please come back tomorrow for more. And don't forget to listen to The Right Time with Bomani Jones from 4 p.m. to 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the GEICO app. Thank you.